Let's now take some reactions from the NDC and the NPP. And let's begin um, as we join, uh, we're being joined on phone actually um, from the quarters of the NPP. And uh, let's see who we have um, on uh, this afternoon. And uh, we're talking about the former President John Dramani Mahama saying that Ghana's economy has become bankrupt, adding that the ruling government remains unconcerned and unwilling to cut expenditures. And uh, we have uh, a guest from the NPP uh, on. Okay, so let's uh, get straight into it. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Great, thank you for your time this afternoon, Manasseh. And uh, well, you've heard what the former president has said. What do you make of it? Yes, let me say a very good afternoon to our cherished viewers and to make the point that government is very much concerned with the happenings in the economy. And we are putting in place measures to ensure we are able to have a more stable macroeconomy, as it were. And I mean, given the statements by the former president, I, I think they are just for politics. I mean, because really, when you look at the measures government is implementing, even the long-term measures to ensure that as it relates even to our city depreciation, currently government through the Bank of Ghana is negotiating with the multinationals to ensure that they are able to stagger the repatriation of their profits and also to enable them open the domiciled account, do, a domiciled dollar account in the country to ensure that they don't send huge, huge volumes of dollars by way of profit, you know, every month. And that, of course, would help to deal with the city depreciation. And again, what government is doing is to intensify our industrialization drive to ensure that that would have more local industries working to ensure we are able to reduce uh, import dependency. And again, government is also putting in place to ensure we are able to have some more fiscal mm. discipline. And I do not agree with the former president by saying government is not cutting down expenditure. I mean, in, from 2022 to date, government announced some expenditure cut measures and they are still in place. Even the president today, the president and the vice president and all government appointees are still taking a 30% cut in salary. And that is evident. And, and there were several other expenditure cuts, okay. uh, 30% cuts in, in, in the releases to MMDAs, a moratorium mm -hmm. on the importation of even... Uh, on, on certain imports, moratorium on the provision of dollars to import goods that we have in country. All these are in place to ensure that we are able to have a more macro economic stability. So government okay. is very much concerned and we are applying mm. more efforts. To our All right, Manasseh, I would wish that you would speak up um, so that we could hear you clearly. But the, it's not just uh, President Mahama who, who seems to you know think that there's been a lot of uh, economic mess that has gone on in this particular government. A lot of Ghanaians, day to day, when you speak to Ghanaians, they are not happy with some of the, uh, you know, um, the decisions or some of the things happening in this government. How different would that be from Dr. Baumia? I, I do not understand your definition of economic mess. If you could provide some more clarity to that. Well, talking about the fact that, I mean, just about yesterday, we understand that our debt has risen you know, to, to uh, higher, higher uh, bits than previous. And all of these things, when you get on the streets, things are getting expensive. People are complaining that things have become harsh lately. I mean, all of these things. How's it going to be different from Dr. Baumia? Because he's in this government also. Okay, so, so to begin with, I mean, increase in debt doesn't mean uh, there is an economic mess. I mean, there are various reasons for which governments borrow. And, you know, most of the demands on government cannot wait. And when you look at the various projects government is doing, even the various social intervention policies among others, these are things that are quite critical and they demand some more attention. And for every loan we have procured, there are parliamentary procedures and the loans are attached to specific projects. And so it cannot be said in any way that mm. uh, because we have high loans, it means there is some kind of economic you know, mismanagement. Okay. Now, looking at the in indicators on the screen, you, you'll see that in 2016, um, the, the figures as compared to 2023 are quite, uh, you know, different there. Now, moving on, as, as a party, the NPP, how do you convince the Ghanaian that things will get better if uh, Dr. Bamia is given the nod? 
I mean, in the first place, when you look at uh, uh, macroeconomic trajectory, to this point, I mean, there are clear indications that the MPP government has managed the country better. When you look at the indicators in 2016, in fact, when you look at our economic growth figures, 2014, 2015, and 2016, in the range of 2.1, 2.9, and 3.5, and they were very low. And don't forget that during those times, there were no external shocks. When we came in, even on the score of economic growth, we were able to average the growth performance of this country to 7% from 2017 to 2019. Even in the COVID year, Ghana was amongst one of the few countries that were able to record positive growth rates. And in 2021, 22, 2023, we were able to even outperform our economic indicator as was then projected even by the IMF and the, and the World Bank. And again, when you come to even the management of the city, you realize that, I mean, in 2017, from 2017 to, I mean, 2019, we've been able to manage the rate of city depreciation. And again, even in 2020, the city was mentioned as one of the best performing currencies, I mean, against the US dollar. And so collectively, when you even look at the performance, the highest you know, city depreciation in a year in the NDC was in 2014, and that was the city depreciated by some 30%. The highest depreciation of the city we have recorded under the MPP was in 2022, and that was around some 27%. And so relatively, and on a comparative basis, we are confident that we have managed the economy very well. But for certain challenges we had, even going the external shocks and other challenges, Ghana wouldn't have been this way, we are putting in place some more measures to ensure we are able to have some more respite. A touch on the city, I'm looking at where the city is getting to, and I'm, of course, Ghanaians knew that the vice president will arrest the city when, uh, you know, given the north and all of that, and we're still having the city uh, on a run in, in that sense. I mean, how do you let us know that it will be better? I mean, so when you look at the reasons for the currency depreciation, I mean, whether we like it or not, the strengthening of the U.S. dollar is very critical, even amongst various major trading currencies. And the moment the U.S. dollar gains strength, all other currencies begin to face some kind of shocks or even depreciation. And, and so that accounts for part of the reason. And again, when you look at even the happenings in the economy, don't forget that recently government made some payments of about 49 billion between January and to date. We've paid contractors to the tune of about some 49 billion Ghana cities. And in, on 27th of February, 2024, government honored the matured coupons to the tune of some 5.8 billion. And so all of these have ensured we have some more liquidity of CD in the system as against the limited supply of dollars. And so, okay. Uh, yeah, so, so that accounts for I mean, and, and of course, the frequent repatriation of profits, among others. These accounts for All right. the recent... Uh, and I said, we would have to leave it here. Of course, the debate continues um, up till December 7. I will definitely continue that. Manasseh Ataboyan is government spokesperson on economy. And we're working the lines to get to the communications team member on VNDC, Beatrice Annan, for her reaction also on uh, some of the statements made by uh, Vice President and the flag bearer for the New Patriotic Party, Dr. Mahmoud Obamia, where he says that uh, John Mama is acting as if he does not know that there are some other external uh, stuff that have contributed to what the economy is looking like right now. Hopefully we'll get her on the phone. But let's, um, okay, we have her on the phone now. So let's get to speak to her. Uh, uh, good afternoon, Beatrice. Thank you for your time here on Newsbeat. Now, the vice president says that former President Mahama is acting as if he does not know the economy has been affected by both internal and external shocks. Well, how do you react to this? Um, good afternoon to our cherished viewers. First of all, let me say that you, let me ask a question. Would you agree with what the vice president has said as a Ghanaian today? Would you agree with that? Patrice, you're putting me in a title. <laughs> no, because you hmm. see, I think we are encouraging a certain culture of reducing the bar of being a president. And Dr. Baumia has been joking everywhere. You monitor his body language. I think that he does not appreciate 
the economic difficulties that the citizens are going through. Dr. Baumia has simply lost focus. It appears to me that there is something amiss and not right. Let me give you an example. How can anybody say that a bag of water that has moved from 2 CD 50 pesos to 10 CD is a better way of measuring the lives of people? How can any reasonable Ghanaian, including a vice president, say that unemployment, which has doubled from 8% to 14.7%, with youth unemployment at 30% be a better economy? How can a man who, when he was in opposition, was holding lectures and asking us to download his speech on restoring the value of the city at the time when the city to a dollar was three cities, 72 pesos, say that today the dollar is 15 cities, 30 pesos to a city. To, yes, 15 cities, 30 pesos. It, it's living in a better economy. I think that you, the media, also have a responsibility to call out the vice president. The World Bank is telling us that more than 850,000 50, people have been pushed down the poverty line. The lives of the citizens are worse off than Dr. Baumia came to meet us. And when he has the opportunity to address captains of industry who have laid off many people that were employed hitherto, whose savings and investments have been lost through a very reckless banking sector cleanup, who practically are struggling. Yesterday, he, if he was there in person, he would have seen that at the mention of the dollar, all CEOs were murmuring. Things are not well. And when he has the opportunity to address the nation, I mean, he makes such vague and unguarded statements like the economy is better. The okay. Ghanaian is worse off. Cost of living is worse and everything is worse. And so if Dr. Baumia is judging the economy by his bank account balance, okay. then we cannot fault him. But if the indicator is the life of the ordinary Ghanaian, mm. I don't think he should be making those unguarded statements. All right. Thank you very much, Beatrice. Of course, Beatrice Sanan is a member of the NDC Communications. We still watch